Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with the Fan TV, man. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video, go smash that like button. Hey, and if you're new here, definitely hit the subscribe button. And everybody, go ahead and comment down below your thoughts in the comments on the video, man. All right. Look, so uh, yesterday, Sunday, I don't really like to do videos on Sundays too much, especially if I'm, if I'm not talking about like a football game or something like that. But that report came out about the Ravens and Lamar Jackson being $100 million apart in negotiations. So, you know, we got to talk about it today at the very least, right? Um, my first question to that is where the hell is Steve, Steve Bashotti at? Where the hell is he at? Because, um, last off season, right? Deshaun Watson gets a guaranteed deal. He had a whole bunch to say about that then, right? Uh, you know, bad for the league. Browns are one team, not a good move. Da, da, da. Yeah. All that to say about this, right? Your franchise quarterback is up for a contract and it's been pretty much radio silence on your end since I would say training camp, right? Now, Going back to last year as well, we heard about how Steve Bashadi tell he told a lie, flat out lied, and said that, you know, Lamar Jackson, I think he's so focused on the Super Bowl that, you know, he's not really too worried about a contract right now. He doesn't really want to get paid right now. He doesn't feel like he deserves it at this current time right now. Right? Lamar Jackson shows up to training camp and says, and somebody asked him the question about, you know, what Steve Bashadi said, and he answers about well, no, I think I'm ready for a contract right now. Um, I think I deserve it. I think that, uh, you know, I'm ready for a contract right now. All right. So fully disputing what Steve Bashadi said just, you know, a week or two before. Right. So, Mr. Bashadi, Mr. Bashadi, right. You're a billionaire. You got a quarterback who is the franchise and we can't seem to get a deal done. Right. Now, listen, this hundred million dollar report came from, well, First of all, Dove Kleinman on Twitter, who's like, I don't even think he's a real reporter, but Jeremy Fowler from ESPN, you know, he had an article about it and whatnot. But Fowler, he's always kind of been on um, the Lamar Jackson not going to get paid. He's the same guy that said last year that uh, uh, coaches were saying that Lamar Jackson has been figured out. So Jeremy Fowler, take the stuff from him with a grain of salt, all right? But anyway, let's let's just say this report is true, right? So Steve Bashadi, where are you at? Okay, you're a businessman. You know that Lamar Jackson is the franchise. You know that he puts he puts people in the seats. So at the end of the day, John Harbaugh and Eric, and Eric DaCosta, they work for you. They're your employees. All right. They when it comes to sign off on these big, big high ticket uh, dollars, I know that comes through you. I just know it does. All right. When we're talking about a quarterback negotiation, somebody who wants to get paid, you know, one hundred and eighty, two hundred million dollars plus. That's got to come through you. So come out and talk to the people about why you won't uh, sign this contract. What, what is going on in the negotiations that is holding it up? Because last year, like I said, you were talking freely at the owners meetings and things like that. The guarantee contract shouldn't happen. Lamar Jackson doesn't want a contract right now. He's focused on football, this and that. And he, like I said, he come out and dispute that as a flat out lie. Right. So now we're here a year later and I haven't really heard anything from you since training camp that's an issue here right now i, I looked at marlon humphrey on twitter right so you know marlon's a funny guy but he was you know a fan had asked him, hey marlon you out there recruiting players at the pro bowl to come play for the ravens and marlon has said that um yeah every time i talk to somebody they say uh are, are you guys gonna pay lamar now listen marlon is a jokester right so who knows if that really happened but you can imagine players that potentially want to come to the Ravens, right? Because they see Greg Roman is gone. Okay, new office coming in. They still got Lamar Jackson if he signs. Yeah, I might want to play for the Ravens, but I'm not going to sign for the Ravens if they can't even. If they're not even going to sign Lamar Jackson. I know the Ravens are not going to give me the contract I want. They're not even going to pay their star quarterback. So what you're doing not only hurts the team internally, it's hurting the team externally. This is a big, big moment in the Ravens franchise history. And you're doing the same thing you did with Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco ended up being overpaid by the Ravens because they waited until he won a Super Bowl, which was the dumbest thing. The Ravens, before Joe Flacco, the Ravens had Steve McNair, who was a good quarterback, right? But besides that, it was a slew of average to terrible quarterbacks. Average to terrible. Joe Flack was the first above average to good quarterback in Ravens franchise history. And y'all drug your feet and paying him. You could have paid him. Then he went out and the Super Bowl has, has a magical run, best playoff run still in NFL history. All right? 
win Super Bowl. Now you have to overpay him. Lamar Jackson wins the MVP, right? Now it's kind of early, right? It was, that was only his second season in the league. Okay, cool, fine, understandable. 2020 comes around. It's clear that he's still a top-notch player. It's clear that you probably should have moved on from Greg Roman. But what's also clear is the fact that the Bills played Josh Allen, right? You got a, you got an MVP on your team. You got a guy who can take you to the playoffs back-to-back years at, at, at that point in time in 2020. The contract was simple. Pay him a dollar more than Josh Allen and let's get rolling. Let's get away from it. Instead, you drag your feet another two seasons and here we are, right? Now we have a quarterback who's out of contract, right? Also, you let the Browns, I'm not going to say let, right? Because the Browns did what they wanted to do. But you can't control all circumstances, right? So the Browns end up paying their quarterback top-notch money, a fully guaranteed contract with a lot of money. Now, that it has to change the negotiations between you and Lamar Jackson. It just has to, right? Lamar Jackson is a, is a smart guy. He's a very, very smart guy. So he sees that. Well, I've done more than Deshaun Watson. I don't have a criminal case like Deshaun Watson or however you want to describe his cases. Um, yeah, I should get the same or if not more. So at, at every single stop and turn, this is on the Ravens. This is on the Ravens. Now, you could say that, well, you know, guaranteeing as much money to a quarterback. He's missed a certain amount of games, this and that. Listen, you could use all your logical arguments all you want, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, you had a chance to pay. You had a chance to pay Lamar Jackson. You waited. You waited. You waited. And now here we are in the situation, right? So that's why I'm telling this video: the Ravens are playing a dangerous, dangerous game with their with their star quarterback, Lamar Jackson, right? There, you could only push somebody so far before the relationship is beyond repair. Okay. Now the Ravens are reaching a point where the relationship could very, very obviously become beyond repair. Now, the next step is trading them. You did all of this work. You pat, you you traded up back into the first round to get Lamar Jackson just so you could have the five years of control, see him turn into an MVP player, just not to pay him in the end? That's bad business. That's bad business. And like I said before, and Marlon Humphrey, are y'all going to pay Lamar Jackson? Yeah, that has ramifications just for this season, but also has ramifications for the future. Because now you have guys, you're going to have guys on your team that say, hey, look, man, if I'm a big time star player, especially on offense, right? If I'm a big time star player, they might not want to pay me, right? So I, I, I might as well just finish out my deal here and go somewhere else because we know the Ravens not going to pay. That's going to be a reputation that's going to build. Because the Ravens have no problem selling that money on the defensive side of the football. And listen, I'm a Ravens fan, so I love defense. But really, I like offense even more. So I like to see highly talented, skilled position players go at it. And Lamar Jackson, for whatever it's worth, he has the one Super Bowl, sure, right? Not That really isn't his fault. But he has the one Super Bowl, sure. But he's already the most talented offensive player the Ravens have ever had. There's never been an offensive player that's come through and done what Lamar Jackson has done, all right? It really hasn't been. The closest you can say, honestly, it's like a Jamal Lewis, right? When Jamal Lewis was running for, you know, 2,000 yards and he was incredible, right? But you got to replace a quarterback above a running back. It, uh, that's just the hierarchy of how it goes, right? So the Ravens, for the first time in franchise history, have a superstar quarterback, right? We love Joe Flacco. He wasn't a superstar. For the first time in franchise history, the Ravens have a superstar quarterback. And they've let negotiations get so bad that we got to keep hearing from the media every other week, every other day about how the Ravens are further and further in part from their superstar quarterback. And I'm only looking at one man. That's Steve Bishotti. We can say what we want about Eric DaCosta. We can say what we want about John Harbaugh. They are his employees. This is a big ticket item. This got to come through the GM. This got to come through the owner's desk. It has to. This is his money. So at the end of the day, I'm disappointed in Eric DeCosta, especially if we don't get this done. I'm not Eric DeCosta, sorry. I'm disappointed in Steve Bashadi, especially if we don't get this done. And that's my thoughts on it, man. Let me know you guys' thoughts on the Lamar Jackson thing. Um, and honestly, yeah, you guys can say Eric DeCosta, you guys can say John Harbaugh, but for me, 
I'm firmly looking at Steve Bashotti, man. It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.